What's this little YouTube 99 Foon Mang here doing a video today. Just wanted to say what's up to all the Deutschland reefers. I've been busy testing out my parameters, my calcium, my alkalinity, my magnesium, and I was doing that every single day. Right now I'm still not dosing anything because I have a calc washer in my auto top off and I'm waiting for the calc washer to go ahead and run out. Once it runs out, then I'll be able to tell how much my tank is actually using, how much the corals are actually consuming. Go ahead and take a look at this purple silo. You can see the difference on the left versus the right. I started using phytoplankton. I picked it up from my local fish store. They had a culture there. Uh, if you remember a few videos back at Sea Creatures, they had some uh, phytoplankton brewing right here. And it's had a positive effect on my corals. I've been using Acropower as well. I haven't been using it as much uh, because when I do use it, I notice a lot more cyano breaking out as you can see there's a big patch right there I do think the aqua power does help I wouldn't recommend using it every single day um, what I was doing is just using a capful and then I was dumping it into my tank every couple of days like every two to three days but I do find myself using the phytoplankton a lot more than the aqua power those of you who are just using aqua power let me know how you're dosing it um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these corals right here I got this Mystic Monte Pora from my buddy Pedro, Mr. Beard. Go check him out. Um, and as you can see, it was pretty brown. And now it has pretty much covered up all of this rock right here. The cool thing is that it's starting to make like these little points. And hopefully it branches out. There's a picture of some uh, acans that I got right there. The green and purple. I ended up picking those up from cherry corals. And now the Mystic is almost touching it. I ended up finding this acan right here. It's looking a little rough because some frog spawn was on top of it. I don't know how it got there, but I think it was because my starry eye Blenny knocked it over. See the starry eye Blenny, he likes to get up in the caves right here. And I don't think I had it glued in. It's glued in now so that it can't fall out. This leather right here was one of my first corals I ever had. I got it from my buddy Tim and as you can see it's getting huge. It's made a whole bunch of little babies over the its lifetime so far in my tank. And those other babies are in my other frag tank. Now the uh, mushrooms right here, they're doing good. I started off with one. Now there's like three. There's some other ones around the tank. But they look really cool when the tinnix are on because those little dots, they just pop. I like the frog spawns, but uh, in my tank, they're not as fluffy and puffy as they were in Kevin's tank. In Kevin's tank, this fro same frog spawn looked huge. Um, this is my A-can right here. It's the Ultra. It's not really looking a whole lot of Ultra. It lost a lot of the awesome colors that it had when I first got it. So hopefully those come back. Some assorted zoos right here that I got. I'm just trying to have this whole area covered. Um, and then my Octo spawn. That Ciano right there, I'm going to use a Siphon. I kind of had to modify my Siphon because the filter on the Siphon was collecting all the sand. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the clownfish right here. He's hosting the anemone. You can tell he's a male because he's a lot smaller than the female. The females are typically larger. Not only that, but he's still juvenile because he has a little bit of that orange still on his face. As far as anemones go, I've had three in this tank and before they were moving all over the place stinging everything and I haven't had any more bad luck since then so I'm pretty happy about that. This bird's nest right here is doing really good. I'm just keeping it on the bottom because I picked it up from my buddy Tim. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on the bottom uh, so I can get used to my light and then slowly work it up on the top. Um, these daisies that I have right here was on a rock which I picked up from uh, my LFS. And now they've kind of like spread all over the place. The Mystic Montepora is coming back. Before it was all white. Now it's starting to turn a little bit more red a little bit of pink so i'm pretty excited about that some of these frags were goners and to my surprise it's starting to color up a little bit you can see where this frag really took a hit um it was it sucks because this was one of the nicer pieces that i had got um it looked like a hand to me but hopefully these pieces right here does just come back um i'm not going to mess with sps as much anymore uh due to the fact that one they're expensive and two i'm not very good at them I'm going to try to dial it in with the ones that I do have and try to color it up. Once I do, then I'm going to go ahead and try to get some more SPS. But until then, I'm not really going to try to mess with it unless I can get it really cheap. So my hat's off to all the SPS keepers out there. You guys are pros. Um, 
trying to be like you guys, but until I can color some of this stuff back up, I'm not going to mess with it. So some of those dudes being uh, Corey, uh, Will Santiago, a um, whole bunch of other guys, Wesley Forbes, uh, Samuko, does some pretty nice ones. Um, my GSP right there, I'll just stick to stuff like GSP. You can see that I uh, zip tied it onto this Tonga branch and it's doing okay. It's grown quite a bit. I got a few new pieces of coral, this uh, cocoa worm, uh, the dragon eyed favia I've had for a while, but it's starting to do good. There's like three eyes right now, so it's pretty neat. Ganapora is also doing good. Picked it up from Reef to Reef uh, live sale from Aqua SD. Uh, my pink bird's nest doing good. It's pretty pink. Uh, I don't want to ruin it and jinx myself, knock on wood, but it is growing. Uh, when I had it, it's just a couple of branches right there. I picked that up from cultivatedreef.com and you know hopefully everything stays pink. I got this purple digi right here but it's not looking so purple. Um, hopefully it comes back right there. It looks like it's hanging on to dear life. My acans are doing good. You can see that they're opened up. I'm going to go ahead and frag that looks like a colt off of it because I don't really like it. I'll probably frag it and then just rubber band it onto some rock. But as you can see the acans are doing pretty good. I ended up using putty for this hammer a while ago and at the time it was a little baby thing so the putty did real good holding it up. But recently it got knocked down, I guess the putty gave away, and I used some BSI glue. Uh, I used that BSI glue to frag and I um, also just said hey, since I didn't have any of that putty I just super glued it on the bottom and it's been holding on really good. The cool thing about it, it didn't make my skimmer go all crazy. Usually when I use that putty, my uh, skimmer, you know, kind of goes crazy for a little bit. Not only that, but the uh, putty is not exactly cheap. And the glue, I found it on Amazon for $5 and then you pay like an extra dollar for the shipping. So that's my preferred glue to use. My little orange oxides are doing great. The purple stylo, it's the purple stylo is a little bit darker now. So that's pretty cool. Cool. And then these cloves that I got, I got these from Cultivated Reef. You can see them growing. They're, when I got them, they were just a baby little thing. And there's even baby uh, cloves coming out now. Some cloves that I really want to get my hands on are those papaya cloves. They look a little bit more orange and they kind of look a little bit more pink. Like the center, the, the accents are orange. So I want to get some of those papaya cloves later on. The name of these ones are Liam's Cloves. Doing really good. I like them. They seem to be spreading pretty fast. On that's even on the sand bed, and they prefer high flow. Here's another um, purple stylo that I picked up. I got this one from uh, Corey, and you can see that it's encrusting on the plug already. Uh, this one never really took a hit, but it is getting darker. Uh, this is a pink uh, Milli that I got from Aqua SD. I'm gonna do a coral unboxing on that. And then that one on top is just a green and uh, purple Montipora branching. Uh, you can see a bunch of new little branches coming up and sticking out of the bases. The Montiporas are doing good. I did take a little hit on the orange Monty Cap. It wasn't so orange. It was more like a faded color now. But now since I've been using the Acro Power and that uh, Phytoplankton, I can tell a, no a difference and it's a lot darker and it's looking a lot healthier. I don't know the name of this piece, but when I got it, it was just like a little baby thing. It's growing up pretty good. And it's green, and then it has like deep yellow in it. The Hollywood Stunner is right there, doing good. And I got some little baby Yumas, and of course the mushrooms. Some things are doing good, while other things aren't. And this is one of the corals that seems to be doing pretty good. I had totally forgot about this piece right here. It's just a bird's nest, but it was uh, green and it had a little bit of uh, pink in it. And the reason I forgot about it is because it fell behind my rock in one of my islands off to the left side of my tank. So when I found it, it was pretty cool because it had all the color, had some nice pieces of color. Of course, with the spots where the uh, rock was in the way, it was white because it wasn't getting any light. Um, to super glue this, I just put some uh, more of that BSI glue on there held it in place and uh, it fell over a couple times which is why there's so much buildup of glue there but uh, it is doing its job. I kind of pit it up high because I didn't want my anemone to sting it. Now if you look close you can see how bright some of the green spots are and you can also see some of that green 
and with the pinkish pinkish highlights right there now i also have some xenia xenia on the bottom of the rock and i like it but i put it on the rock to kind of so that it doesn't spread anywhere else the anemones has been touching the xenia and nothing has happened to the xenia no die off or anything like that in fact it seems like it's gotten bigger let's take a side view of the corals you can see that the growth on it is pretty good and i also have some aptasia I've been using the Aptasia X. I know I try to use some super glue, but I don't want to waste my super glue on the Aptasia. So I've just been hitting them real good with the Aptasia X. Initially, they disappear, and then a couple weeks later, they come back stronger than ever, it seems like. I got my female clown in here. You can tell she doesn't have any hints of orange on her. It's also the larger one, but uh, this is pretty much, she goes to any anemone that she wants. This one, there's no one next to it, and the one next to my Akan Island. I haven't got bit by my clownfish at all. I've been lucky so far. Um, with this tank or with my 45 gallon cube, no issues at all. Um, but uh, as far as fish, I have been adding some new fish. I also took a loss on some new fish. But uh, the loss that I did take was on my uh, brown powder tank. Uh, basically he got attacked and I think it was my yellow tank because they were beefing. I came home one day from work and then I noticed that he wasn't eating when I was feeding everybody else. Before that, he was a healthy, active eater and he would actually snatch food out of uh, some of the other fish's mouth. So it does suck losing him. Um, the other fish are doing okay. The uh, yellow tang, the bully, is also doing good. You know, my nasal tang is doing good. Hippo tang is doing good. All of the other fish are okay except for the uh, powder brown one is the only one that I lost. I'm going to go ahead and keep my current stock of fish the way it is right now. Um, I do want to add some more fish later on, get some more tanks, but I want to do that when I get a 150 gallon tank. You know, I, I've been looking at the SEA 150 gallon tanks just because um, I know it's not too much more water volume, but the, the measurements, the dimensions is what I'm looking at. I could probably fit a six foot tank in this space, but, uh, you know, I kind of like the five foot, you know, the five foot tank. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. I got to save up for that. Probably next year in the beginning of income tax season. But let's go ahead and change it up here. This is the glue that I was talking about during the video. The BSI, Bob Smith Industry Glue. I prefer this glue um, because I've tried a whole bunch of other types of glue. Glues from as far as dollar glue, different kind of gel glue, a um, whole bunch of glue. And I, the reason I went with BSI is because, um, one, I tried it. And then two... I feel like you get the most bang for your buck out of it. Like I said, I got it on Amazon for $5 and then the dollar shipping. So for me, this is the best glue. The only rule is that you must be a subscriber of me. Okay, you have to subscribe to the channel. Um, this is open to everybody in the, throughout the world. And then I'll send you the uh, contact info for you to send me an address. Now, if you don't send me the address, it'll go to the next person for the next video. Okay. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe guys. Uh, tell me about your favorite movie growing up as a kid and I'll send you uh, some glue. Thanks guys. Take care.